push it. Well taken. As you as you're talking about packages there, um, and labour is going to win when they want. Back to the VSN now. You say we pure. Is that guaranteed? Yep, hundred percent. Guaranteed. Yep. Yep. We were we were appealed the current VSN bill. We work with um, David and Max, and I know that they've been in contact with many of the people here in this room about a, a different sort of an idea, which is effectively a, which is what we signed on the, on the steps of Parliament. So I put my signature to it. So you don't do that kind of lightly on the steps of Parliament and have it filmed, um, only to sort of turn around and say no to it. So um, uh, we are pretty committed to that. But I actually think that what we had was a much better system. And we. Look, and that was an opt-out clause in the first few weeks. You, you, you carried on as you as you do now, but you had a, a period of time in which you could have you could have opted opted out um, of, of um, four weeks or whatever, 28 days or whatever. It was a little bit like keep saver. This is the whole idea of that. Um, we when we thought we were we looked like we were going to uh, send this down the down the down the tracks. Uh, I actually had a number of sessions with Heather Roy about trying to build some sort of a compromise. And she was very interested um, because basically it gave her what she, effectively what she wanted, but, but didn't go as far as she would have liked, but certainly gave her that, that, that aspect of freedom for, of choice of being able to opt out if they wanted to. Um, when they realized they, they could get it through Parliament, they, they sort of folded on the deal and, and, and went, went for the, the all or nothing, the sort of, um, policy, so that gives us no alternative but to, to reverse it. So, yeah, you certainly have my word. If I'm there, um, I'm in that position. I certainly will be following that through. Um, um, my name's Sam, just from um, University of Auckland. Um, I'm pleased to see that there's been a lot of um, restoration and funding um, for universities and for um, ITPs and the ACE and, and those sorts of things. Um, <clears throat> but the question has got to be asked, I mean, the government, the, the national pay files that we've broken, no, no one can afford anything, and I mean, they're, despite the fact they're adding another billion dollars to the deficit by through tax cuts, but the question has to be asked, how will Labour and government pay for the, those promises? Yeah, I mean, and, and that's a good question, and I'll be up, perfectly up, straight, up front with you. And straight <coughs> with you. Um, it was really tough to get what I got, to be honest with you, um, and I had to fight my economic team uh, but I think many of us believe we, we went through universities and politics and whatever ourselves, so you know we really like recognise the value of it. Um, we it is fully costed. We've been we've been you know perhaps even overly um, aware of the criticism that we might get from from being sort of this uh, spending Labour Party. So we, we've we've taken a really good close look at that. And and the key is, issues around it is, is about the capital gains tax. And the idea of the capital gains tax, which builds up over time, it means that we we would have to front end borrow slightly more than, than what national would, but that the we would pay it off at exactly the same time. So that's all costed through. It also means for the capital gains tax that people who are not paying tax now but are earning from capital gains have to pay as well, which I think most New Zealanders would think it was, it was fair. Um, and the fact that it that it helps will help us also redirect some of that uh, money that might go into the property market into sort of supporting some of our companies and things is also an, an, an added bonus to that. So capital gains is a, is, a, is, a, is a critical element. But look, the other thing about it, really, to be frank with you, is, is, is about priorities. And, we, and you mentioned tax cuts for you know, wealthy New Zealanders, and they've done really, really well in the last three years. People in my electorate um, haven't done so well. I mean, I literally had um, somebody come in my electorate a couple of weeks ago who was hungry. I mean, she said, um, look, I'm on a, you know, I'm getting $170, I can't remember exactly what it was, $180. I spent $130 on rent. Um, I had to have some emergency dental treatment, which I couldn't, and I'd blow on my budget. So she goes down to, down to, down to Wins and to get an emergency benefit. And Wins says, well, well, you've got to go and get a, um, before you get an emergency benefit, you've got to have budgeting advice. So she rings up budgeting advice and says, and they say, well, it's a four-week waiting list um, before you can get budgeting advice. So she came, she came into the office and said, look, I'm not sure what I do. I mean, we often are the sort of the, the, the place of last resort. What the hell do I do? 
I mean, she wasn't a, she wasn't silly. She was actually a trained teacher. She was looking for a, this is also looking for a job. She said, $180 minus $130 equals $60. That's how much I have to live on. Food, electricity, telephone, whatever, transport. Um, I don't have to go to a budgeting device, but I, but I can't in four weeks. And so we ended up um, giving her a food parcel, which we keep in the office now, um, and, and also give, sending her down to the road to the Salvation Army. So this is kind of where we are. And, and you know, it, it really sort of, it, it, it's the sort of New Zealand that I just don't want to be part of. Um, and I don't want to see, I don't want to see grow. So it is about priorities, and, and when you look at, um, you know, there's a road being built north of Auckland called the Pūhoi to Wellsford Road. Two billion dollars we're going to build, we're going to spend on that. Uh, for less than 10%, we could do up the road that we've got there now and do exactly what we, uh, without having a four-lane highway with, you know, the whole sort of nine years. <coughs> And we would save 1.8 billion dollars. Now, where, where could we better spend 1.8 billion dollars? I mean, tertiary education, for example, helping people like that. Um, so I, I, I do think it's it's about a plan, a, an economic plan, and, a, and but it's also about where you, where you set your priorities as a as a party. Yeah. Sorry, it was a bit of a long answer. Right? <laughs> Thanks, David. Um, uh, talking about priorities uh, with regards to students in tertiary education. Um, do you have a set of priority students than that? Well, I, I mean, I wanted to address Massey because I think you guys are in a... I, I, I do think we're going to have, have to look a little more carefully at those at, at part-time students. And, and, and if, if we want an economy where we encourage people to come in, retrain, upskill, uh, then we've got to recognise that people do it in different ways. And um, one of the things that I'm a little bit concerned about is that we grade universities on the basis of course completions, etc. Whereas I know that in, in Massey, you know, if I'm out there in the workforce and I need, think I need a, an IT qualification or maybe a paper to sub schools, if I come in and I do two papers and I leave, now that's sort of a fail and to some degree, um, yet it's, it's, it may have helped my productivity in, the, in, my, in my job immensely and we're not factoring all that in. So uh, just Specifically on Massey, I think that, um, and, and, but, but also all part time, and it happens with politics as well, um, and perhaps more particularly the politics, um, that, we, that we need to sort of start valuing different courses and diff that courses, different pathways that people are taking with their education. Um, and, and coming back to the adult and community education, yes, we would restore the funding for it, but we'd also want to take a look at how we can perhaps staircase people bit in, into those areas better. So they come in to do a Moroccan cooking class, good on them, and then they move off and, and, and into something else. And we could do, we could, I think we could do that uh, better than we have done in the past as well. I have a um, question, uh, David, from a student, and he's um, said, uh, they emailed us, um, so <coughs> New Zealand has the seventh highest tuition fees in the OECD. And um, that uh, means we have a very low uh, sort of internal rate of return on our tertiary education compared to other countries. So you have third lowest internal rate of return as the OECD measures it. Um, are you concerned about the cost of study and will, what will Labour do to reduce that? Um, well, yeah, clearly the, the cost of study is, uh, uh, is, is, is really important. It was obviously one of the most, one of the principles that we, we, we laid out in our policy. Um, there's a, there's a lot of talk about us giving more money to students than that we do overwhelmingly than, than we might do to uh, than other countries. Um, and you look, and there's always these graphs that you see. I don't know if people have seen them around the place, where they sort of see this is much we give to students and stuff we give to universities versus everybody everywhere else. It's a we do our, our calculations somewhat differently in New Zealand, so it's, we're not so different really from, from other places. But uh, that's the, the, the fees maxima is the, is, the, is the thing that we can that we're going to stand up and say, look, uh, we will uh, improve the threshold for student allowances and we'll keep, keep the fees maximum and bring in the um, training incentive allowance. In this time, I mean, I'd like to think I'd like to tell you I promise more, but um, as we were the questions before, um, we can't. We can't promise more than, more than what we've got, so we're at least trying to keep that um, standard. So people who 
are eligible to go to a polytech or university um, can get in. Yeah, one of the um, things that uh, you know, Dave Messi, one of the things that you were critical of um, government was when they um, made discriminatory provisions for those people who are 55 and over, and also you were critical of um, the government's uh, decision to remove the $1,000 course of other costs. Um, and I'm wondering if it was so discriminatory, why that wasn't inserted back into your policy. Um, for example, if you get a student who's an extramural student and they're sort of um, are working part time and studying, say, five papers so they can't get the student allowance and they live in some Timaru or Omaru or even got a flight of pounds in order to get a clear contact course, how can they get there when the funding has been taken away and they can't afford to go? How can they get the course? What's the latest policy on that? Yeah, what we what we did we had, we had we had a little bit of a problem there when we came to write a policy. You're right, we were critical of it. People over 55, um, you've got you know, who knows how many years left in the workforce. I mean, if you're sitting here and you're 23 years old and you say, okay, well, 15 years from now I'm going to be 38, uh, you would sort of think, well, actually, that's a pretty big chunk of time, and it's worth training me to be to to work through till I'm 38. I mean, well, it's the same thing at 55. So, um, I think um, so. We were critical about. We, we did quite a lot of work around, so what we've done in our, in our policy is said we're going to review it with the, with the, with the aim of not reversing it. Um, the, 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 the critical part of it was when, we, when, uh, when the government came out and said 70% uh, of these people don't pay their loans back, um, we, we put in a lot of questions to say, okay, what we want to do is get the breakdown of, and what courses they were doing, what breakdown they were, were they part-time, <coughs> were they full-time? And we never got the information, so we actually ended up with a, uh, a situation where we, where we couldn't make a, a good decision. I mean, what we'd want to do is to say, okay, rather than people at 55 going and doing, or you know, maybe at 75 doing a history course and getting a student allowance or something, I mean, you could argue that if somebody was going back to do, do something that was going to carry on in, in, in their workplace, in some ways that would be a priority at 55. And so, but we couldn't get a breakdown, and so we ended up in, in, in a situation where we just sort of said, look, we're going to have to kick for touch, but here and just say we'll, we'll review it. Um, but our feeling is it's discriminatory as it stands at the moment. What about the course loan costs? And same, same, same for that as well, yeah. We, asked, we had, I mean, I had, I don't know how many, I mean, maybe a maybe hundred questions in, and I, did, I, um, and I didn't get any, we did we simply, it's one of those things which when you're not in government, you, you pitch the best you can, um, and when you're up against an economic team that says, "Well, this is going to cost 36 million," and we don't we don't understand we the calculation around this, we, you have to you, have to, you actually have to fight for it. You have to justify it with basic numbers, and I, and I honestly couldn't do that. So until until that um, until we get that, I mean, we won't we can't say anything more than than review. Um, you know, I asked this question of the national person before. A um, hundred years ago, this guy called Kenneth Sism, who graduated from Auckland University, and he went to Oxford University, and he tutored J.R.R. Tolkien uh, in a course that enabled him to write The Lord of the Rings, which has been critical in helping our film industry and our tourist industry. <laughs> now, two years ago, that program got cut at the University of oh, Victoria University, and it's <coughs> been in demise in all the universities around the country, and some of the last years down in the Now, Now, uh, what's Labour's sort of policy on protecting programs that have a value like that, which can help our industries, and even um, potentially in our environmental problems that we have right now, yeah. um, and uh, they've produced international students like the one who treated Tolkien. What's his policy on particularly those sort of programs? Yeah, I didn't, I'm not aware of this particular program. I guess it's, it's just run through the university itself, is it? Or it, it, it was. But, it's through, uh, through Victoria <coughs> University that connected to, to Oxford University. Well, it's, it's, it was in all the universities. It was part of the English program of all... It used to be part of the English program of all the universities around the world. <coughs> but I'm just wondering, because it's helped our tourists, yeah. and you know, film industry and stuff like that, it's even changed employment laws and things like that. Um, you know, it's, it's I'm not sure what the rate of return would be over a hundred years. <laughs> <laughs>
you know, I, 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 I can see where you're, where you're getting it. And, 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 and it's a little bit like science. I mean, do you, I mean, this is the argument that I use, which scientists use, and I think and it's a persuasive argument. You go, you're studying the mouth parts of a, of a what, you know, and, and how is that going to sort of benefit humanity? Um, but actually, it's that, it's that kind of fortuitous uh, type of, it, you know, experimentation or whatever that brings, it often creates, uh, that knowledge creates all sorts of other opportunities. It's very difficult to know how it's going to come out. Come out. Um, so, you know, for example, in our science policy, which I've just written but not released, I've, I've, I've maintained the sort of the importance on basic fundamental science research because it's still <coughs> so important to everything else. And I guess in some ways it's that same sort of, same sort of thing. So I, I agree with it, but I wouldn't want to pick winners uh, and say, look, mate, this is going to be a winner in, uh, in, in 22-12. I mean, you know. <laughs> so, yeah. Following on from that, it's an associated question, with regards to science funding, because you might see it as a strategically important type of research and learning, would you therefore attend to the, inc the high cost of delivering science courses compared to the funding that it's received? Okay, so in most universities, or in the universities in New Zealand, science delivery costs more and the funding doesn't cover it. So there's a sort of an incentive to deliver accounting, humanities, law, which don't cost as much to run. Yeah, the, look, this is a, a, a really critical point, um, and it's, it's a bigger, you, you touched on a much, much bigger issue, and I, when I was doing, the, doing some work um, a few weeks ago, I looked at the, the, the bachelor enrolments over the last seven or eight years, and I wanted to know, you know, where, where are they going? Um, and it's, the, the uh, ones that have increased are uh, business management and accountancy, they've gone up. Um, engineering has flatlined, maths has declined slowly, um, chemistry's gone down slowly. Computer science, you would think with, you know, like wetter industries, etc., would, it would be something that would be, it's, it's dropped like a stone. I mean, it's the biggest drop of, it, of, any, one, of any particular um, discipline. And you've got to ask yourself, um, what's, what's happening here? Why, aren't, why and, and, and it's partly what you say, and it's partly the, the fact that people don't see science as a smart, brainy industry to go into, it's, it's reasonably well paid as well. Yeah, if you look at the engineers around the place, look at Rob Five for uh, they're engineers. I mean, they're actually in business, building businesses. And <coughs> so I think there's a bit of a it's not just selling, but it's, there's, there's, a, there's a bit of there's a sort of a contradiction. Our three most respected people in New Zealand are, are scientists, um, and yet we don't have too many people coming through to do science. And when you talk to the the dean of science up here in Victoria University, David. Bibby, I think. Um, he will say, look, we don't have any problems about the numbers wanting to get in our science program. We can cater for them. The problem is in the schools, that people in schools don't want to do science or don't want to carry on science into, into the university. So there's a whole rethinking um, around it. And if you contrast ourselves with Denmark, um, Denmark produces three times more engineers than New Zealand does. Um, and and I, and I was speaking to a, um, some Danish people the other day and I was, we were talking about this and they said, look, we've had an increase in people doing business management in Denmark as well, but more than half of them are actually doing entrepreneurial studies. So they see, they see their business degree as a, as a means of increasing productivity rather than, I'm not, I'm not, not, not being accountants and lawyers and people like that, but it's just that I think we've got it a little out of, out of kilter at the moment if we want to build that productive society. Does that mean you'd review the rates at which they're funded? Yeah, we put that in the tertiary policy actually. Yeah. Okay, we've got one more, time for one more question. We've got one for a student yeah. question from uh, Samantha Horseman, the Why do you think students are, the only thing that society expected to borrow from the government, what will Labour do to help to fix the, so borrow to live, and what will Labour do to help fix this issue? Well, I, 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 I've sort of now, uh, gone over that um, in some of the other questions. Um, you know, there's no, there's no doubt the comparison's been made a few years ago that, that it was free to go to university and now, and now it costs. Um, but there are a whole lot more people going through tertiary education now than there were, uh, for example, uh, when I went through university. Um, I went through on a, 
on a teacher studentship and I was bonded for three years to stay and work. Uh, you know, it, was, it enabled me to get through without, without, without a loan. So, um, generationally, yep, yeah, it's unequal. I, I don't disagree with that. Can we afford to do anything different at the moment? I, I don't think we can, but what we've done within our policy is to go as far as we can to make sure that there's uh, that, that tertiary education is affordable for, uh, for, for young people. Okay, I think, I think that's all the time we have. Do you want to say any last, any last final? No, no, really, 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 really. <coughs> okay, thank no, you. no, thanks very much. And look, thanks again. I just want to, uh, these guys and a lot of, I know a lot of you around the place have been with, with the VSM this, this year. I mean, it's been enormously. Um, Kind of supportive of us just knowing that there's a group of people that are writing in or texting us or going on Facebook and saying, hey, keep it up. So, uh, yeah, thanks very much for that. I appreciate it.